Next question is from Coach Carruthers. What were some of the resources you read or studied that had an impact on your current programs? Oh, my gosh. You know, so here's the thing. Okay, we uh, Maps Anabolic I created, uh, what was it, back in, what, 2013? 13. 13, okay. And then, you know, Maps Performance and Aesthetic and Split and Strong, all the other programs we all created together. What went into writing those programs? Decades of experience between yeah. all of us. So you're looking at, you know— 60 years of experience. If we don't even count Doug, you can throw in another 20 years on top of it. With, even all, the, we, with all the studies with, and all the certifications. With right. studies, mm-hmm. certifications, with reading, with training so many different clients and training ourselves, that's what went into the programs. So if I listed all the stuff that I, that I, I read. Not I mean, only, but not only that, like I, I know where this person is going Like with this. Like, oh, you know, you guys, you the way you have your frequency or the choices of exercises, like what studies led to that? And it, it wasn't a study that led to any one of those single decisions. It's a culmination. It's concepts. Yes. I think it's all these concepts that we were exposed to. We tried with our clients. We saw successes by doing certain uh, methods that we'd learned and gone through certification courses and things. And we're like, I really like this for this specific reason. And so I would take certain uh, types of, of you know mobility moves and, and be like, this is going to be a great assessment. Dude, and so I would you know look at things like that as I was going through these courses. Dude, this, so, so yesterday I get a DM from someone. So I I guess uh, Mike Matthews, good friend of ours, right? Um, owns the supplement company, company Legion, also writes some good fitness books. Knows his stuff. Mike Matthews is one of the better, I'd say, fitness authorities uh, that, that there are today. Uh, but Mike Matthews interviewed, uh, what's his name? Menno Hel- Helmsman? I don't know how to say his name. Anyways, Big guy, bodybuilder guy? No, he's, he, this guy does lots of studies and training for people oh, for a long time. Oh, oh. He was on his podcast, and the debate was full body workouts versus body part splits. Now, mm. we know Mike Matthews is a big fan of body part splits. Menno is full body. And if you ask a lot of coaches and trainers who've trained a lot of people over a long period of time, they say full body. So I get this DM and he's like, you know, I love Mike and I love you and you guys are so smart. And But, uh, but you know, Mike, he leans more towards splits. And why does he do that when you guys are always talking about full body? And I said, look, I said, mm. Mike is extremely knowledgeable, very smart. The guy reads everything and he knows how to disseminate it and break down the studies and pick what is actually working, what's not working. Now, we've done that as well, but we also combine that with lots of experience training lots and lots and lots of people, and that's why we get the – that's behavior, why we have our opinion. There's a behavioral component in all of our decisions. Like the, when I think about the core – At the end of the day, it's what works. When, right? I, when I think of the core principles of the programming that we've done, like uh, obviously all the research around periodization. So if you read all the research around periodization, you'll get the understanding of why we phase the workouts. If you read all the research on the, the exercises that are the most valuable, the biggest bang for your buck, that show the most results, everything from CNS to building muscle to burning fat to burning calories, you'll see why we, we picked yeah. all the exercises. So the core of all of our and, programs. And then after that, then we have taken into account, oh, then frequency would be another one, right? There are all the all the studies that are around frequency oh, and the portion of Tempo, yes. you know, resi- you know, so those, volume. Those to me are like the, the really good, as far as like the research, right, is there. Then after that, then we all sit here and we go back and forth on what we've seen. Yes. You know, and we and we take into account like the, so something some study might say, oh, this is the best for this, but then we go, well, wait a second, how many of the clients did you ever train yeah, yeah. stuck to that for longer than two yeah, weeks? Yeah, or, that never works. Right. Exactly. And how do those flow together in the workout? Because you know, everything written on paper is completely different I'll, than actually applying it in person, watching somebody go through it. Yeah, I'll make a silly example. Let's say a study comes out tomorrow and it says, you know, cardio at four AM. Fasted for 45 minutes, burned 15% more fat than cardio at any times, any other times of the day. Then you'd get the research, uh, you know, junkies would come out and be like, "This is how you should do cardio. This is what I prescribe: 45 minutes at 4 a.m." Because here's what the study said. Me as a trainer is going to say, "Don't do that." I've never had any client that's ever done. 45 minutes of cardio at 4 a.m. every single day. Forever. It just doesn't work. <laughs> right. So. They're not going to do it forever. Yeah, so it's not worth right. the 15% because you're going to get 0% right. because you're never going to do it. That's a, that's a silly example, uh, well, but I made gr- it very clear. Another good example is what you're talking about with the body part split versus the uh, full body argument. We, just made, we, we talk about it at nauseum on this podcast. And it's because the reality of it is nobody ever trains like a perfect study does, where you don't miss anything, you go perfect, you you measure at the volume, everything's all... No, everybody, very few people are doing that. Most people are going how they feel. Most people have shit that happens, they get sick, they miss a day. And so you have to factor all that in and, and consistency with whatever they're going to do is really important. So if you have somebody who's on a body part split 
and they're like 80% of the population who goes consistent for a couple weeks or maybe in a couple months and then falls off the wagon and then comes back. What you end up finding out is like over the course of months and years, somebody who follows a full body routine ends up hitting the muscle groups more frequently, which ends up giving them more results over in the big picture, not just in a six week yeah. study. And it's also this other factor that nobody ever considers, which is just the practice, the practice of right. the same exercises over and over and getting good at them. That's why it makes them so effective. Full body workouts do that. So I'm going to list certain books that have been more influ influential than others. Now, as a kid, I read all the magazines. When I say all, I literally, I mean, I had my first job at, well, I was working with my dad at the age of 13, and then I got, you know, jobs at restaurants after that, washing dishes. And I, I literally subscribed to Iron Man, Muscle and Fitness, Flex Magazine, Muscle Mag, Muscle Media 2000. And I think that's it. I had five uh, Muscle Magazine uh, subscriptions. So I read all of them all the time. Those had a lot of influence. And although they were big pamphlets to sell supplements, essentially, there was some articles in there that were pretty smart. And so I, I, I did learn some stuff. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Very, very impactful because it literally listed all of the, definitely all of the free weight exercises for every body part. So I learned all the exercises that you could do with free weights at a very young age from that book because I was able to study it. Uh, Mike Menser's Heavy Duty was another book uh, that had a huge impact, mainly because he positioned an argument which was, hey, if you do way less volume, do more intensity, you'll get the same results. Now, it's not, what he said wasn't 100% correct, but it did get me to question certain things and look at the way that I, I would design my workouts. Um, uh, Dinosaur Training uh, was another book that I, I learned a lot from. Um, and then old publications. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about turn of the century, like first the strong men uh, of, of, you know, the, of the early 1900s, you know, watching how they Eugene worked out. Eugene Sandow and you know, your Charles Atlases and all those. Yeah, you know, I, I was totally, uh, uh, you know, researching all that stuff too. Like I loved old strength uh, journals and, and ways that like people did it back in the day uh, before, you know, we had this this surge of like uh, anabolic steroids and, and different ways of, uh, you know, organizing the gym with with machines. It's like, what did we used to do? And so I got into that. I got into Dr. Ed Thomas's work. He was really like movement focused, uh, Greg Cook, you know, Eric Cressy. Uh, you know, like uh, lots of the sports uh, specific type uh, uh, trainers out there that put out really good information. So uh, you, one of, another one was Super Training by Mel Siff, yeah. which is uh, where they we finally got information about everything, you know, from, uh, you know, Russian studies. Yeah. And, you know, it's just stuff like that. If you if you look look at towards your, your interest. And so obviously I had an interest in movement and specifically in, uh, you, you know, athletic pursuits. Well, another area that we, none of us mentioned right now that is taken into consideration all the programs is like uh, mobility and movement. So like books like supple leopard or mm. st certifications like Ken stretch or Eldoa yes. or FRC, oh, like, yeah. things like that are also taken into consideration when we're, when we're programming, because it's not just about the X's and O's on everything. It's also about just learning to teach people to move better and then, and all the deficiencies and dysfunction that we saw for all those years. So things like that are taken into consideration when we choose certain exercise or exercise order because we know the habits and behaviors of people. Yeah, so, and, and here's what, what else is really cool is that, you know, and I loved it when I met um, uh, Adam and Justin because I had met two other fanatics about fitness uh, that were similar to my level of fanaticism. They, they would look at some different things, but they studied it with the same level of passion. And so what you get is you get, you know, sometimes people get stuck at just listening to advice from one type of strength athlete, like bodybuilder or power lifter or, you know, yoga expert. You know, one thing that I did is, and I did this later on and I, it was so impactful, was I studied how power lifters trained. And then I studied how Olympic lifters trained. Mm -hmm. And then I'd read about kettlebell, you know, type training. And then I'd read about martial arts and, and calisthenics type training. And all of this, you get all these nuggets of wisdom from these old forms of training. Powerlifting has been around for a long time. So is bodybuilding. So is Olympic lifting, kettlebell training even longer. You're going to get like aspects and, and, and things that you can learn from each of them apply to your training. So what you see in our programs is a culmination of, it's like our programs, and although all of them are designed for specific avatars, like for example, MAPS Performance, 
build muscle but move well. We we like to use the ancient athlete as the as the avatar. But what you really have are the mixed martial arts of muscle building programs. We pick the best from each category and injected what worked so well in each category. And so what you'd end up with is a very well balanced body that builds muscle, avoids plateaus and and it feels phenomenal. I also feel like we broke down a lot of barriers that we saw. I remember this was a lot of the motivation on the podcast is, you know, to your point, Sal, about how we tend to gravitate towards, you know, one professional or one expert in a field and then we 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 marry that ideology mm-hmm. and it and then and then what the fitness space does is they they separate everybody and it's my way is better than your way because that's it's what all makes, versus yeah because that's that's what sells better right that's I'm, I'm trying to sell my ideas that my way of training or my modality is better than your modality and just the three of us didn't subscribe to that belief like yeah. because we had so much experience in all different aspects we studied all different ways of training we saw the value of all of it and it wasn't like oh this guy's more right than that guy it's like no they're they're all right in their own in their own right and there's something to take from all of those and really when you look at the the the, the entire collection of all the maps programs they are there's there's pieces of all of that in every one of those programs because none of us subscribe to one ideology dude it's like you know uh, like like uh, you know bruce lee was a, quite a bit of a philosopher when it came to martial arts and he was one of the first martial artists to say here's what kung fu does and that's really well and oh look at the way that boxers dance and their footwork and look how they use the jab and look how wrestlers change levels and are able to control a fight on the ground and look at submissions and leverage and all that stuff and I mean, all of those things make you a really good uh, fighter, right? So mm-hmm. that's really the big thing uh, that you want to you want to take out of this. Even if your goal is just to build a lot of muscle, man, you don't think powerlifters build muscle or Olympic lifters build muscle or kettlebell athletes build muscle? You don't think mobility helps you build muscle? Like all those things contribute to better performance and better results. And so you know, uh, it's studying all of those things, I think that's gone into each and every maps program.